Howdy YouTube and welcome to this episode of The Gunman. So this video here I'm going to be showing you a pretty cool trick. I've been using this one for years ever since a guy in Melbourne taught me about it. So what you basically do is you cut an old piece of sealer off an old panel. You can alternately get an old panel say like a big bonnet and flip it up the other way and make your own bead to the exact size that you like. But I've found a lot of the time you're able to find a piece of um, sealer underneath an old panel that you can actually just reuse yourself. So mainly you're going to be using this for wheel arches because it can be really tricky. You work and gravity is definitely working against you and when you're talking about using um, some usually fairly runny seam sealer um, it's just going to start dropping towards the ground especially under those wheel arches. I've found new panels like new boot lid or a bonnet or a hood or a trunk as you may call it in America you're usually pretty right to just um, flip that panel upside down um, then run your bead of seam sealer around there let it dry, put it on the stand and um, start painting it. But for stuff like this, it can be really tricky. So using an old bead is an yeah, really handy trick. Um, so what I like to do is put a little bit of sealer down first to get the uh, old piece of sealer to stick to, um, the piece that you've cut off another panel. Um, some people super glue, I highly recommend not super gluing it because it's not really a good method because it, it's super glue is so brittle, there's no flex in it. Um, and the idea of this is that you're still going to actually have proper seam sealer sealing that seam. Um, and I have found you will get really good adhesion out of it too um, because the inside of the bead of seam sealer is going to be completely fresh, so it's going to stick to that new seam sealer as well. As you see there, put a nice amount on first. It doesn't matter if it's um, a little bit, uh, you know, overflowing or there's a little bit too much because you're usually able to clean the rest of that off with, um, yeah, some prep sole. I wouldn't go and use thinners or anything. So wax and grease remover, um, aka prep sole, usually does the job perfectly. Um, just make sure it's pushed down nicely. Make sure that if there is any gaps in the seam of the metal that you do push that seam sealer into it before you put your new bead over it as well. Another thing I thought I'd make a quick mention to while we're on the topic is seam sealer tape. I honestly think it's absolute garbage. I've seen that stuff fall off so many panels it's not funny um, and yeah panels just completely rusting out because it actually hasn't uh, sealed the seam correctly so stay away from sealer tape whereas i've found this stuff here um or this method at least uh does work uh yeah properly and it gets my thumbs up anyway because as i say you do actually have your seam sealer in there also if you hang around for a couple more minutes at the end of this video i did decide to include some footage of me using my relatively new segola seam sealer gun um, so I thought I'd turn the back half of this video into a little bit of a review and demo on the uh, Segola seam sealer gun. I've been watching you. Obviously, once you get the seam sealer down, give it five or ten minutes. I honestly find that these seam sealers that I use anyway, um, they don't need much, if any, flash off time. You are usually pretty right to paint straight over them. Um, so, yeah, put your couple of coats of base coat uh, and clear coat over it as you usually would, and happy days. So I did decide to just give you a, a quick look at spraying the base coat over, just a, yeah, each coat of base coat. 
and then a quick photo of it when it was finished. I did forget to get any actual um, video footage of this because, yeah, as you can probably understand, I'm a pretty busy man when I'm at work and uh, I'm there primarily to do my job, not to make videos. So this is that Segola Sam Sealer gun that I was mentioning earlier. This is actually the first time using it. Um, I found it took a little bit to get the hang of uh, yeah, where to actually set it up. So there is a... Um, a speed control on the back there so you can slow it up and speed it uh, slow it down and speed it up as you will um, but one thing I did find is that you see that orange piece on the front of it um, if it's not really tight then there won't be a uh, correct air seal in there so nothing was coming out sometimes and I felt like I actually had it quite tight but you just need to give it that real tight reef up to uh, create that air seal and off you go and it's uh, quite a cool little sealer gun I, I like it I like the um, minimalistic side of it like there's not many parts in there to go wrong um, and yeah, I mentioned to a lot of people when they asked me, oh, you know, should I get air tools or electric tools? Um, and mainly my answer is if you've got a good quality compressor that you can rely on, you're best off getting air tools. I mean, I doubt that there would even hmm, come to think of it. Yeah, there probably would be an electric sealer gun. And actually, I have seen them before. Um, but yeah, like I, I find that with electric uh, tools there's more things that can go wrong with them like usually it's your brushes and stuff like that that go wrong but with your air tool there's less moving parts in there and less that can go wrong so um, yeah in, in the workshop in like a panel shop you're best off just always going for air tools however at home um, there's one time I would recommend getting electric tools and that would be like an orbital sander if you're DIY doing it at home rather than relying on that compressor to uh, keep pumped up when you're trying to use an orbital sander could actually be uh, better off getting a electrical sander because um, yeah, probably have a bit bit more of a steady uh, speed uh, through the orbital sanders. Um, but yeah, apart from that, you know, in a workshop with a good compressor, always just go air tools. But there you go. You can see it delivers uh, quite a nice, neat bead. I take pride in my seam sealer work as I do uh, every other step of the um, procedure. But um, seam sealing is something that can take years of practice. Uh, and even on this panel here, like that first line that I did over on the other side of this bonnet here, um, wasn't quite happy with it. It started going off on a bit of an angle, so I did end up removing that. I've found like the best way to remove it is just a spray out card, like cardboard spray out card, and just um, yeah, pull it off with that and uh, dig it out with that, and yeah, quick prep sole or wax and grease remover and redo that bead. So as you can see, just along here, it's a little bit um, a little bit uneven, but most of it's quite fine. Um, yeah, I've found like with bonnets and stuff like this I will put it out in the sun for an hour or so mainly so that when we put it up onto our stand it's uh, you're not going to go and put your fingers into it but as I say you're usually pretty right to spray straight over your fresh seam sealer um, you don't get any sort of solvent pop issues or anything when you bake it it usually does dry out underneath the paint quite fine so this is that a bar spider that we um, did that seam sealer trick and I hope you guys have enjoyed it. This is a trick I use uh, quite often and um, yeah. Until then, I'll see you in the next one. Now you've seen this video, get out there and paint some shit. Thanks for watching and this has been another Gunman production. Goodbye.